Welcome to my forge press build. These are some I-beams that I got from my work that uh, were used to ship a huge 3D printer. Here's a good scale image with my five-year-old. Excited to get some shop time with dad. And I have a 3D model just to get the geometry laid out. Now it's time to get to cutting. I'm using a oxyacetylene torch to cut these beams since I don't have a saw in my shop big enough to, to handle them. So we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. We're going to cut them and grind them down, clean them up, get them ready for fit up. Now I'm starting to fit all the uh, I-beams together on the table here. Um, I'm just applying heavy tacks to make sure everything stays together in the assembly as I continue to fit the other components. Uh, I'm trying to clean up all the edges from the oxyacetylene cuts because there's a lot of carbon built up in those cuts and I want to try to keep the welds clean when it comes time for that. Uh, it's a pretty big assembly so I use my engine hoist to uh, pull it over so I can get the forks under it and I just hoist that up onto some square tubing to make sure nothing falls over on the ground. Now I'm just beefing up the welds on the lifting tab. He's what I like to call a maker in the making. It's time to cut out some parts. Most of this material is one inch or three quarter inch mild steel. I use uh, annual cutters to do a lot of the whole drilling to help speed things up. Now the upper die assembly is tacked together and the lower die assembly is tacked together and ready to fit up. Here is a combo die cut from a block of 1018 which took a ridiculous amount of time to do. And here's how it fits into the bottom die holder. You can start to see things coming together. Now I'm on to the guide components. Uh, I've got my boy here again helping me make some parts to try to get him in the shop building stuff as much as possible. It's I think he really enjoys it. We have fun together. He just doesn't have quite the arm strength to get that half inch bit through one inch material. He will soon enough. Here's my tiny tornado coming up with some new knife designs. That's the guide uh, components installed. Now it's time to work on the uh, base or the cart. Uh, this press is going to be on wheels, so coming up with uh, some pretty heavy duty legs and mostly basically using scrap that was left over from my shop build and other stuff I have laying around. So it's not what I would design if I had access to all of the material profiles that I wanted, but I'm just trying to make things work. Uh, this press build is on a budget, but it's coming together. A lot of these tubes were left outside, so you saw me cleaning up all the rust and whatnot off of them. So here's the cart fit up, just tacked to make sure we can get everything mounted in the motor with the uh, pump. So now it's time to lift the upper assembly onto the cart and get the mounting feet attached to the, uh, the upper H-frame. So my tractor likes to drop, which actually worked out pretty well because it slowly dropped as I guided the the feet into place and got them tacked up. Then I'm adding some gussets to the to the feet. Not that it's completely necessary, but it makes me feel better. So here's the full assembly prior to welding. I have all the components fit, brackets made, holes drilled, and so on. 
Uh, so here I'm starting to take it all apart and then we'll get to welding. Got my daughter here ready to weld in her fluffy boots. So now I'm just uh, going through all of the joints, getting nice big heavy welds on everything. I have so many components built into the H-frame that I don't see it necessary to put multiple beads on, on one joint. So I'm just running one nice big quarter inch bead on each each joint. Really impressed with the uh, Lincoln 210 MP. Such an awesome machine. Got all the parts to the coder, and I went with a silver vein color, which is great for hiding scratches and in industrial use. So now it's time for the fun part of putting everything back together. Got the tank mounted. Now I'm going to uh, lift the upper H frame assembly onto the cart. I recruited some help from the messes to get all the bolts lined up and mounted. Now it's starting to look like a press. I decided to use the tractor to get the upper die assembly in since I decided to make it 400 pounds. Another late night in the shop with Dad putting parts together. So here I'm painstakingly starting to uh, add all the other components and hardware, brackets, uh, fixing bikes, you know, usual dad stuff. On to some wiring. Here are my boys helping me solder up some connections for the magnetic starter, which will kick on the 5 horsepower single phase motor which will spin the 11 gallon per minute pump. We have power. Now it's time to get all the hydraulic components mounted and the hydraulic lines installed. Here's the uh, schematic I came up with since I really have no idea how to uh, assemble hydraulics. So I figured it'd be a good idea to lay it out. For all of the lines that uh, will be above the cart surface, we've put this wrap on there to help protect against forge scale. Now my uh, tiny tornado is doing some of the final assembly. And here she is. Overall, this took me about three and a half months to build since most of the time I was working on it at night or on the weekends, working full time but uh, pretty happy with how it turned out. Now let's see if it works. Everything is working pretty well. No uh, leaks or anything like that. I built a couple sets of dies, some for welding and some for uh, drawing. And it really just does an immense amount of work getting the welds to set. So welds are looking pretty good. Here I'm putting it to the test with a real large stack of 1084 and 15 and 20 uh, for a feather Damascus pattern. But I've never had any issues getting this machine to put out some good welds. So overall pretty happy with the performance. Now it's time to uh, go make some knives. <laughs> 